My name is Ryer. I'm one of your librarians at South Puget Sound Community College. And in this video today, I'm going to talk about some of the basics of how to use databases. Let's get started. We will cover two key features, choosing the right database for your research need. And then I'll give a database demo with several search tips embedded in it. So in the first part of choosing databases, we will pay special attention to the popular multi-subject databases, which are really great for starting out your research. To find databases, start at the library's homepage and click the button that says Find Databases. That will take you to our database finding page. The way this is organized is that up at the top, there's a section called Start Your Research. These are some of the most popular, most useful databases that we recommend. If you don't know where to start, it's a great starting place. Additionally, scrolling down a little further, you can choose databases by subject, or you can choose them alphabetically if you already have one that your teacher has recommended or your, a librarian has recommended. So choosing them by subject, the way that that works is perhaps you're in a business class and you're doing research for that business class. You would scroll down and open up the business option and you'll see a list of recommended databases that specialize in business information. To give another example, Perhaps you're in an English class and you're writing a topic that has to do with education. In that case, although it's an English class, you'll probably find the best information by going to the education database listing and find a list of great databases that contain a bunch of sources from that field. Before I jump into the databases themselves, I do think it's worth spending a moment talking about what kind of stuff we actually are going to find in these databases. What you're going to find is various sources of information, such as newspaper articles, magazine articles from popular magazines. You'll find articles from trade publications, encyclopedia entries. So we've got streaming media databases. We also, one of the things that a lot of students come to the library looking for is they need scholarly sources. And those scholarly sources are published in special magazines. Often they're called journals, but essentially they are scholarly magazines that publish these specialized research articles. And the databases that we have here at SPSCC, a lot of them specialize in that kind of information. I'm going to show you two of the most popular ones, and I'm going to highlight how they have similar features, even though the interfaces are slightly different. Now we're ready to dive into the second part of our video, where we'll actually look at some databases, and I'll share a few of my database search tips. Particularly, I'm going to talk about keyword searching, uh, ways that we can evaluate the number of results, ways that we can use that in a feedback loop to improve our searches, and finally, ways that we can use the tools built into the database to narrow and refine our results, uh, specifically with the filters. Okay, so when you're ready to try out a database, you're going to be on this page, and you're going to click the icon. If you're at home, this may ask you to log in uh, with your SPSCC email and password. So here we are in Academic Search Complete, which is one of many databases that we have from a database provider called EBSCOhost. Um, what we have here might look like a confusing page, but essentially we have several different search boxes. And then we have further options. My recommendation when you're just starting out and you're developing your topic and trying to get a sense of what's here, you can take a Google-like approach to this and just try some search terms. Um, unlike Google and other search uh, commercial search engines, 
I don't recommend putting in full questions. Rather, I recommend putting in some of the most powerful and impactful keywords that you would use. So perhaps you have decided that you want to do something on climate change and you're interested in water and water quality, and maybe you're interested in plastics and pollution. Uh, you might be particularly interested in salmon and, and you might be particularly interested in uh, the Puget Sound region. That's all great. And your assignment may have you phrase that in a very specific way that you have a research question. That's great. However, you don't need to put that research question into this tool. You might want to start by just going with some broad search terms, some broad key terms that you can get a sense of how much stuff is in here, okay? So I'm gonna start very, very broad. Should be too broad to be useful, but I'm going to start with a search for just climate change. I wanna see how much information is in this database on the big, broad topic of climate change. Even though I want to do something more narrow, let's try this. Climate change. Okay, I get almost right here under, it gives me the number of search results. Almost 97,000. That's pretty good news. It's a lot less than we would get on a commercial search engine, but it's still way too much to read and I haven't really told it anything more specific. So what we might wanna do is we might want something specifically on salmon. We want climate change and salmon. I'm just gonna leave everything else alone. Let's get a sense of how much is in here. We've got over 200, but we've really narrowed it down. Um, I would say something like a couple hundred is a pretty good number to work with. From here, we might want to start scanning the results. Or the other thing we can do is we can use the filters on the left side to narrow these 250 down to the most relevant. I might need things from the last 10, 15 years. I could use the date slider. Um, I might know that I need just academic journals. A word of caution though, um, if you're just starting out in your research, even if your assignment requires academic journals at some point, you may have better luck starting out with some broad uh, sources that are meant for a general audience so that you get a good basis and background and then you go forward into finding those academic sources. Let's look at the magazine articles that we have. There's only 20 of them. We'll see. Scrolling through this list, it's hard to tell how many of these are really specifically about salmon. This one looks like it is. Now the other ones, salmon is certainly coming up somewhere See, it'll give us some highlights, or in some cases, it shows us that salmon is in the subject term, which subject term, you could think of this as a specialized kind of, it's like a tag that someone who works for the database and for the publication has said that this article, this source, is very much about that topic. Let's take a look at one of these sources. In this database, it's going to load a PDF view. So this, it's a seven page article I can see from here. It might actually be slightly, it's actually shorter than that. The last page looks like this, not very useful. So it's actually only a six page article. It includes some nice color photography. Um, it's got nice graphic layout, but it also has a lot of nice in-depth writing. For many assignments, 
this could be a fine starting place to learn about the topic and decide on some more narrow aspects. Regardless of the type of article, you're going to have tools, uh, kind of like actions on the far right side that can help you do things with this. Uh, some that I want to point out are this little one. It will email it to you. It will include the PDF and it will include a citation. You can email it. You can also generate just the citation in several different styles. A word of warning. This is a good example here. Um, the, these are not 100% perfect. For example, in APA, I guarantee that it does not want the author's last name in all caps. Um, you would have to make some minor adjustments to that. Um, additionally, it has APA 7th edition. Your professor may require a newer edition, or they might have special requirements. Um, either way, this gets you 90% of the way there and has the key information that you need. You'll just need to do a little bit of adjusting and proofreading to make it match what your assignment requires and what your professor requires. Um, lastly, on the actions, there's this one at the very bottom that looks like two links of a chain. This is very useful. This is a permalink, and this will work for you later on, and it will work for other people who need to see this who are associated with SPSCC like your professors, you copy this to save it. If you copy the link up at the top of the browser, it will not, it won't even work for you a day later. So that's it for the actions and looking at this PDF. Um, again, this one is a good example of a popular magazine article. Let's go back to the results. Let's see if we can find a scholarly source. Remember, we selected before just magazines. So instead, I'm going to click off of that. And now I'm going to click academic journals. And now I should have a good list of academic journals that match my search. Let's take a look at what these look like and compare and contrast with that other source we just looked at. The database tells me that this is an academic source. And by the look and feel of it, it does feel quite a bit different than the source we just looked at. It's 15, 14, 15 pages long. It is very dense with text. It has tons of citations in it. It has an abstract. It has a lengthy, complex title. It has a section at the bottom of the first page that lists the authors and where, what their affiliations are, where they work, essentially. Scholarly articles will typically have an introduction, just as you see here. And then they will have a methods section where they outline the methods of their research. They might have maps and graphs and charts and data like this. They will talk about how they analyze their data. They'll typically have a section called results. They'll have a section called discussion where they'll talk about what those results might mean. And this one has an acknowledgement section. Um, that's not always there, but sometimes there. Uh, but most importantly, another hallmark of scholarly articles is that they will have a reference list. This one is a nice, healthy, massive, two and a half page reference list. They have a lot of research. Hint, hint, um, it is very recommended to go back and seek out some of the sources that these folks used um, when and where appropriate. So we just looked at Academic Search Complete by EBSCO. Let's take a look real quick at another database 
And I'm just going to point out a couple features that are very similar. Okay, so here I am in research library. It looks a little different than that other one, but there's a lot of similar features. It has a search box up here and I can put some words in. When I'm starting, I'm just gonna put some words and see what comes up. I'm going to make sure that they have something on my topic. And I also wanna get a sense of how much is in here. Notice I get a million results in this database for climate change. It seems clear to me that there's quite a bit more in this database on that topic than there was in the other. But we did find some good sources in that other database. I'm gonna do climate change, salmon. Let's see what we get. Notice it does some highlights to show me where in the source that keyword shows up in research library, just like the other one. We've got options on the left side to narrow things down. Um, I don't think I talked much about subject terms, but these can be really useful for making sure that your search gets you the best sources and kind of narrows things down. So if you're specifically interested in rivers, you might want to include that. Maybe temperature is what we're really interested in. We'll narrow down to those. We see the search box up here. We can always go back and modify our search. And this is the basic search version, or you can look at the advanced search. Looks a little bit more like the EBSCOhost one. One thing you can do, but just watch out that you have enough sources. So you could say, oh, I want to make sure that it has salmon in the title so that I know that it's really all about that. Do that and run a search. Okay, many different ways to get to good results. Um, there's lots and lots to learn about databases, but hopefully in this quick video, I've showed you how to choose the best database and a few key features that you'll find in these tools uh, to help you get started with your research. Look forward to hearing from you. Uh, you can contact us at library at spscc.edu or we've got around the clock chat service with librarians from all over the country. All right, until next time.